I'm Jordan Belfort, and this is Sales School. NetSuite is the world's number one cloud business system. Bottom line, it gives you visibility and control over your financials, HR, inventory, e-commerce, and more. It's everything you need all in one place. In fact, over 21,000 companies are using NetSuite right now, so you'll be in great company right alongside them. So let NetSuite show you how they'll benefit your business with a free product tour at netsuite.com slash school. For young entrepreneurs, yeah, right. What's the what's the best? Like, I'm not like what industry reaches. Just, just what's the advice that you would give? Like, you know, to a young guy, 20, 25 years old, right, wants to go out, get rich, get and build a great life. What, what what advice? Just overall advice would you give them? It's, it's very easy for me. It's shadowing. Go shadow somebody. Go shadow somebody. Proximity that's been very is good. power, right? But, not just proximity. Proximity is, hey, Jordan, can I take you out to lunch and spend time with you? That could be proximity. I'm talking about sticking by. The hey, can I yeah. work for Jordan? Be your right hand guy. Be a the movie American Gangster. You see Frank Lucas sees his boss, shadows him for ten years. Then he becomes. You see this in business. You see this in sports. You see this. Steve Kerr is shadowing Phil Jackson. Then he shadows Popovich. Now he's the best coach in the NBA outside of Popovich. There's an element of shadowing. So you got to find somebody locally where you say, look, I want to go work for this guy. And I'm going to spend three years with this guy and learn from him. So the idea is that, like, let's say, you, you know, you, you're you're a born entrepreneur, right? You know it's in your blood. Yeah. But as part of that, like, there's a certain period of sacrifice to really, if you find the right mentor, someone that you can, like, you can really, you know, kind of really tap into, right? And really learn from and grow with. There's nothing wrong with spending a certain amount of time there and really Absolutely you know, not. those grooming years, right? I think a lot of people skip over that. They don't, they not, they don't want to sit there and, and kind of be subservient to someone else. They even think of something, if you're in a, like, you know, there's an entrepreneurial mindset to go work for someone else, but they're not mutually exclusive. No, it's okay to do it if there's an end game in mind, right? That you're, you know, you're not looking to be a lifelong servant, yeah. but to tap into whatever you need, but then eventually when the time is right and you know what you need to know, you have the connections, the respect, you go out on your own. Is that I, sort of? Absolutely. I'm, I'm all about, if you shadow the right person, you shadow the right person. And then for me, get to a point where you can have a power position with this person. Get to a point where you can, I'm talking to the person that's absolutely ambitious it. driven. I'm sure. not talking to the guy that wants to do a, a role playing type of position. I'm talking to somebody who says, I want to go be somebody and I want to go make tens, if not hundreds, chase the big dollars, but I want to be able to do it with somebody. You find like a lot of times somebody goes and works for a guy who's doing very well. He's known in the community, say the, the whoever of different cities. Every city has somebody that everybody wants to work for. You go work for that guy. Then it comes to a point where you're like, I'm going to go do my own thing. It may not make sense for you to go do your own thing. There's a lot of people right now being billionaires, being entrepreneurs, not entrepreneurs. I, you, in certain industries, by the like financial service, you could tap into infrastructure. It's easier. Absolutely. To, no doubt about it. Absolutely. Even Balmer, look what Balmer's worth, you know, 30, 40 billion dollars. Right. He never started anything. He worked with Gates. So positioning is critical, knowing where your strengths are. Uh, you know, this whole idea about I, I can be that guy. You can't be everybody. You got to know it very early. You cannot be everybody. There are certain people you and I cannot be like. There are certain personality traits. That, no doubt. No I, doubt about it. So the sooner you understand. Identifying your own strengths and accepting it. Yes. And, and, right, yeah. So style, like I find, like, let's just say if I relate to your style, I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm like his style. Then I got to work for a guy like you. Say a different style of selling. You go look at a guy's style selling that's very proper, right, you know, yeah, very sure. You got to go to that guy. Somebody that fits your style that's killing it, then go shadow that person. And a few years later, you can make some decisions on where you want to go. I think that, you know, one of the things is important to point out with that is that when, you, when you're modeling someone, you don't have to necessarily take every aspect of them. You can extract very the true. best, right? Because I made that mistake. Because you're right, I've done that, and I did that, and I actually had some guy, some amazing traits, but he had some bad ones too, and I didn't realize I was young and naive, and I took sort of the whole organism. You could actually have one, two, three people, and so you did, you had five, you said you had five entities, and you sort of pulled the best from each one, started your company, pivoted a couple of times, boom, took off. So I think the key is, is that when you do what you say, because I think it's a great thing to do, but you don't have to always take everything from someone. You could take only the best traits and the ones that fit you and sort of leave, because no one's perfect. Everyone's got their flaws and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, one of the best advices I got many, many years ago was 
uh, you know, sons and fathers or daughters and mothers go through three phases. First, they idolize, then they demonize, then they humanize. <laughs> so idolize, demonize, humanize. Oh my gosh, my dad's my hero. Dad, you're an asshole. You know nothing. You don't even understand what I'm going through. Oh my gosh, my dad's not perfect. He's a human right. being just like me. So yeah, anybody you work with, you're gonna go through right. it. And the goal is to eventually get to the humanized phase because no one is gonna be perfect. 